Hello children, welcome back to Uma Talks and uh, here I am with standard 10th English, okay, uh, fourth poem, Amanda, okay, so we'll do paragraph wise uh, explanation and uh, just go through it, hope uh, you all have subscribed to the channel and if not subscribed, do subscribe it, press the bell button, share it with your friends, hope till now you must have understood. Uh, this channel is really going to be useful for you and I've started posting English videos how to learn to speak English okay so um, if you go to my channel you can uh, benefit from there as well so let us start with the poetry I'm in the poem fourth okay and the poet is Robert Clean. so let me give you the idea first the central idea the main theme of this particular poetry Okay, this talks about the issue of children's growing, okay, and their upbringing, the way the children are brought up, they grow up, okay, so there, and it also uh, highlights the struggles, okay, which a child faces, and the poet also stresses that uh, children should not uh, be devoid of freedom, okay, and spontaneity in their natural growth, they must be spontaneous in answering things, okay, that should not be curbed. The parents also have a great responsibility uh, uh, to bring up the children thinking that uh, they are the future uh, responsible citizens of the country, okay? And they should see that the children are uh, not repressed, not to feel uh, repressed. And uh, in this particular poetry in Amanda, uh, her parents prepare her to be acceptable in the society by restricting her in many ways. They feel that society is only going to accept these kind of children and many of um, her um, you can say her freedoms are being curbed so but they do not feel that uh, in doing so they curtail her freedom and space okay they do not feel the parents do not feel that they are doing something wrong so she feels this restriction so much that she does not want to grow up the child uh, wants to stop growing she wants to be a small child only okay and remain an orphan but remain an orphan okay it's a very, uh, you can say, strong opinion. So, continuous taunting, nagging, fault finding, okay, makes her moody, makes the child moody and the results do not come out as desired. So, the moral of the poem is uh, very loud, very specific, okay, lucid, flowing and clear for all. Now, the poetic devices, poetic devices, here alliteration is used, alliteration is repetition of Initial consonant sounds in the same line that is stop that slouching and sit up straight. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. S S use of S stop S okay slouching S sit S and straight S all the S's then again uh, stop that sulking at once Amanda so S stop S sulking that is alliteration. Let's come to metaphor. Metaphor is figure of speech showing comparison of two unidentical things. Now here orphan. Orphan who does not have nagging parents. Okay. And silence is golden. Okay. That is silence having the attribute of gold. So silence compared with gold. Now allusion is also there. That is a reference to a thing, person or place from religion, history, myth or literature. Okay. And here what is allusion? Mermaid. Mermaid is taken from fairy tale that is suggesting freedom and Rapunzel that is a German folk, uh, folk tale character who lives in a higher top. Okay and rhyme scheme is AABA in the first one CCC, AADA, triple E, GGG and AAHA. So uh, let's start with the stanzas. The very first stanza, don't bite your nails Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. Okay, so this is what the parents uh, tell. So in this particular stanza, Amanda is instructed by her parents not to bite her nails. Okay, and sit lazily with her shoulders bent like this. You sit now, that. So uh, that is said. This is a bad norm. Okay, and let's proper etiquette. The tone and the tenor of the instruction of how to sit, her present sitting slouching is not acceptable. Okay, Amanda is getting trained in social and personal etiquette. Okay, and this implies a suggestion of parents of young girls 
as to how they should bring up their children especially the girls the stress is on making amanda acceptable to the human society okay uh, parents are more scared whether the children will be acceptable in the society or not and that is why sometimes they nag their children so uh, that is what and her name in the end of the stanza is made to sound in the form of exclamation as irritating insulting it okay and it expresses amanda's parents wrong methods of teaching and training her let's come to second paragraph there is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitants is me a murmured drifting blissfully okay so languid is relaxed emerald you know it's green soul soul is uh, only one person lone person okay mermaid we have talked about jalpari okay a sea creature and what else drifting blissfully that is moving slowly so here in this particular uh, paragraph okay the whole stanza is given in brackets and that uh, shows what okay on the present situation in the poem presented situation in the poem it's also an imaginative escape of amarella amarella uh, this um, amanda wants to escape so that is what it shows which is highly sensitive and feels greatly troubled by the taunts of her parents and that is why she thinks like that she escapes in imagination to her own world into the sea which is far away from the nagging commands of her parents and this imagined world is free from all the kinds of restrictions and uh, she imagines herself like a free and joyful mermaid okay sailing freely as she likes in the emerald waters and this world of amanda is a blissful place where she wants to be forever mermaid over here symbol of freedom and wonder for her okay and it also implies that children in such situation act like this let's come to third paragraph did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda i thought i told you to clean your shoes amanda okay so again tidy clean you know very well okay so explanation let's uh, do uh, this uh, particular paragraph so the poet again brings her to her physical world because she was lost in her old thoughts okay and uh, now uh, with these uh, lines of her parents again she comes back to the uh, world the present world so amanda amanda's parents they ask her to finish her homework clean her room okay and she is also instructed to clean her shoes okay but the pattern of instructions and the amounts to treat amanda okay that is very humiliating the tone itself is very insulting very humiliating and that shows that amanda doesn't care for these instructions as she feels irritated disgusted with the nagging attitude of her parents okay and equally her parents also adopt a very stern a very tough tone involved in i thought i told you to clean your shoes there okay so that is what and it points that the possibility that amanda is getting obstinate and her parents are losing their head on to her they cannot make her do what they want her to do <clears throat> let's come to the fourth paragraph i am an orphan roaming the street i pat in soft dust with my hushed bare feet the silence is golden the freedom is sweet okay so here orphan you know uh, children whose parents are dead roaming is just wandering here pat in make designs hushed is silent and bare shoeless so in this particular stanza amanda reacts to her mother's harsh words okay she withdraws she again moves into her imaginative world again and the first line i am an orphan expresses amanda's helplessness okay and awful depression it happens with children when they don't like something of their parents they want to be away from them they feel that they have the parents who don't love them so better to be an orphan she is greatly dejected and disappointed okay uh, due to the uh, instructions of the parents okay irritational instructions you can say and uh, uh, she is troubled emotionally uh, she has no shoes on her feet and creates a pattern on the saw of dust you know you with your um, fingers of your leg you keep on making designs with your uh, foot that is all children do okay that is what this girl was also doing and she walks in a very slow manner that throws light on her precarious condition 
she also loves silence and freedom okay because she likes uh, that uh, due to the nagging of the parents and she also likes to remain in her world of imagination okay love silence and freedom because of her parents yelling and crude kinds of comments so that is the fourth paragraph now fifth paragraph children don't eat that chocolate amanda remember your ek nay amanda will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you amanda okay so this is pimples you know very well mohase and uh, now let us come to this lines okay here uh, the instructions are in cold commands of amanda's parents she is asked not to eat chocolates because uh, she will develop acne on her face and it also shows the care and attention towards the external uh, appearance okay and its values uh, she is made conscious of the natural uh, phenomenon of developing acne on her face and this again indicates of the value and necessity of social the society it loves the children with a sweet face that you can say parents nagging will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you uh, amanda is cruel and monstrous okay simply killing amanda's spontaneous growth and this also expresses her parents anger and she is scolded now and then every time the value of her appearance in the society gains more significance than the natural growth in this particular paragraph okay let's move to uh, the next one fifth we've already done sixth yes i am rapunzel i have not a care life in a tar is tranquil and rare i'll certainly never let down my bright hair okay so here the world is full of her imaginations amanda's imaginations and she imagines to be a girl with long golden hair uh, just like rapunzel who lived in a castle again her imagination she is a fairy tale character rapunzel is a fairy tale character and who was made to live in a high tower okay she thinks that rapunzel's life must have been very peaceful and contented self satisfying while living in that high tower but she does not want that uh, the fairy's fate that was meted out to her she doesn't know what um, uh, fate she had theek hai uski kismat mein kya thi usne kaise jiya that she didn't know she does not want to let down her bright air also and she seeks repulsions like life far away from the life as hers at present okay children and the inhuman treatment has sapped the mind's inclination towards human society it is already taken her away from the society she doesn't want any other person okay with her as that would mean repetition of her suffering emotionally and she doesn't have any faith in the human society and its cruel demands on her freedom and personal space okay so let's come to the last paragraph of this particular poetry stop that sulking at once amanda you are always so moody amanda anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda sulking is getting bad tempered churchura hona rud jana okay moody is changing moods and nagged is teasing so here amanda's parents still continue with their harsh instructions okay amanda still remains in her own imaginative world and believes that uh, the uh, amanda is and the parents believe that sh- the girl is not reacting and that is very bad okay they are more worried about their impressions in society it's clear in anyone would think that i nagged at you anyone would think that i nagged at you the mother says okay that they do want they do not want the society to know that they uh, irritate the child they are nagging the child that's what they are worried about how society will see how society will perceive them through amanda's uh, remaining in foul mood okay and they are also concerned with establishing a fair balance between amanda what amanda wants and what the society expects from amanda this is really a very cruel situation as amanda's parents are harming amanda's natural growth due to compulsions at societal level okay so this is uh, you can say a tussle which every child faces at home with the parents okay uh, if you talk from the parents point of view yes they feel they are correct 
but when you think from the child points of view uh, the child has his own views of looking at things okay so this tussle have been since years okay and uh, i hope this is going to continue as well uh, we can only try to soften our relations and develop a little softness over there so that the child can have a full complete growth so hope you would have enjoyed this poetry with me thank you for watching thank you